OK. Oh, I'm here. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. I hope I will not need this one. Huh? Uh, thank you for coming for this uh, lesson of archaeology today. And we will dive uh, slowly into, uh, into several projects uh, and several things. Please, yeah, sit down. Uh, we will dive into, uh, into things. So, so many things, you know. Guys, sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we will speak about uh, about projects that become obsolete. Not everyone can have this stump stone. Uh, sometimes we learn during history that in technology, some uh, something is too many, and we have to change somehow. Uh, we just don't know how and what will be the next successful technology. And uh, sometimes it's great to dive into what was before the technology we have as granted now. So, for example, this is picture of uh, New York Street from 1893. Uh, and what you see on the street is the horse poo. Because in New York in that time there were... Uh, 200,000 horses in New York, each of them producing 10 kilo uh, of manure of horse poo every day that makes 2 million of kilograms of shit every day. <laughs> Isn't, that was not sustainable, so it's, for us nowadays it's not, uh, 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 it's, it's being granted that horses being uh, were replaced by cars, uh, but in that time it was not so visible. Uh, in this ta talk we will speak about uh, first a physical object, physical inventions, and then I will slowly drift to, to software projects. But before I start, I want to stop for a moment and tell you how I got an uh, idea for, for this presentation, for this talk. Uh, Sometimes we sit uh, with, uh, with my colleagues uh, in the kitchen, drinking coffee, telling stories. And I sometimes said how we used to code on Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Uh, the code was stored on magnetic tapes uh, and loaded to computer via uh, cassette player, ordinary cassette player. This allows such miracles like broadcasting the uh, programs on the radio recorded on normal cassette recorder and then loaded into the computer. Uh, and that was the oldest technology I remember. But during the time, I seen several technologies going up and down, being replaced uh, of others. And I realized that uh, I'm somehow old. Uh, I was rehearsing this talk uh, this morning in car, uh, and my kid told me, Oh, that you are really old. Uh, I don't remember. I, I, I don't know about any of this you said about. Uh, and so I will tell you about this. Uh, for me, I take it as granted that I've seen this technology going up and down, and I get some experience from that. But some of you were born uh, just a few years ago for me, <laughs> uh, and I have some gray, uh, gray hairs. Uh, so I will tell you about this. We will start by some technology developed by Nokia. Uh, and that's toilet paper uh, on developer. They, they were producing this. It was not their invention. Uh, so toilet paper were common since 1883. Uh, it, but it was only 1930 which, when it was announced as splinter free. Splinter is that tiny wooden thing which will get stuck into your skin, so in this case, into your ass. Uh, and this is just 100 years ago. That obvious, Small. pardon? Small, yeah, just few generations. Bring us to question, 
what people used before, because I can't imagine the life without toilet paper. Uh, well, almost anything they found around them, like there was leaves, most popular was hay, uh, what was there, uh, even, even uh, uh, shells, uh, seashells they used. So, so almost anything. Mahar, hold on, if you were noble and wealthy man, you can afford something soft, fluffy, and self-cleaning. <laughs> So in the castles and shuttles, they use kitties for cleaning their bottoms. And I can only imagine the nobleman saying, is that a toilet paper? Is it self-cleaning? That's not possible to succeed. Kitties are much better. Uh, but yeah, let, let the toilet paper back and focus on some technology. This time. And from now, we will use the technology which I really uh, was witness of rising and going down. This is uh, evolution of, of uh, phones, so starting with smartphone, going to NMT phone uh, up. Uh, so just a quick question uh, for the audience. How many of you have a smartphone? Please raise a hand. OK, almost everyone. How many of you have a dumb phone or the phone with the buttons? One, two. So, so there are some cases, but not many. And I remember when the smartphone was starting to be sell, uh, a lot of people, most of the people were saying, oh, this is weird technology. The smartphones are big. It will not fit into my pocket. Mm, it's, uh, it's fragile, too, too big uh, glass. And lastly, it doesn't last long like my Nokia, which lasts a week or two. And you have to charge it every day. This is not going to succeed. I will never, ever buy a smartphone. And we have just seen the result seconds ago. Everyone has the smartphone, but those two guys. <laughs> How did it come that everyone who hated the new technology now suddenly used it? We will dive into more examples uh, before making any conclusion. But let's dive more into the history. So even before the uh, down phones, uh, there were the first one, the GSM phones and NMT phones. Uh, and NMT phones, it was really suitcase uh, and big phones. Uh, Really hard and heavy uh, to carry. Uh, I remember when they were used for the first time in public space, on the streets, on the buses. Uh, other people have landlines. Uh, those phones at home with the wire, which allow you to get max one or two meters far from the socket. If you were happy, there was a long waiting for being uh, uh, having the landline. And I remember how the people said, oh, smartphones, why they are, they have to make the call right now on the bus? Why? Is it so important that it will not wait till they will get home? I will never, ever call from the buses or from the streets. It's annoying that other people are hearing what I'm discussing and it's disturbing me. It's annoying. I will never, ever do that. Fast forward till now. Hey, sister. I got a vaginal infection. Yeah, from the stranger who I had a sex with last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True story. So people are not afraid, like, discussing anything in public. And again, they were uh, against the technology at the first. Now, all of us are using this technology. How did that happen? Another example. How many of you have SSD disk in your computer? OK. Again, I think everyone or almost everyone. I remember when SSD disk started. Oh, this is weird technology. Yeah, expensive, but mostly 
it allows only limited writes to the disk. I will never ever use SSD disk. I will use rotating disk for the rest of my life. I will never use SSD disk. Eh? You, have you just seen the results? All of you have SSD disk. And yeah, I have rotating disk in my NAS storage at home, but not anywhere else. Desktop computer. When I started with, with computers, uh, uh, oh, I started with Sinclair ZX Spectrum, but when the PC, uh, IBM compatible machine started, this was the thing. Everyone has uh, this big desktop and, uh, uh, at home and table or on the table. It was great. Uh, then notebook starts. Ah, I, I was a big opponent of notebooks because like desktop, the spacey thing, you can easily upgrade it, take away the part, plug another part and easily change, add another socket to the, to the PCI. Uh, it will improve your comp computer, no problem. Again, just quick questionnaire. How many of you have desktop? Oh, that's at least half of the audience. Uh, how many of you use desktop as uh, your work computer at office? Four, five? Unfair. Yeah, it's unfair. So, okay, so it's still in the progress. Okay. Um, <laughs> CD computer, CD disk. Uh, I remember again when the CD was a thing and uh, there was a guy saying, you can listen to MP3. It's so crippled music. Uh, you, can, you can listen to damage all the, the music. And the only thing you can listen to is CD, uh, because that have the, all these highs and lows. Uh, that's the only thing. <laughs> Vinyl is better. Yes, yes. Uh, so people are getting back to that, because all of us are listening to some streaming music, just MP3, but streaming where you don't even have to choose choice how uh, mm, compressed the music is. Just, uh, again, questioner, how many of you have the CD player uh, like uh, in, in your computer or uh, at home as, uh, okay. So that's maybe 20 people. How many of you actively listen to CD? <laughs> okay, that may be even 10 people. But yeah, not definitely a majority. So, yeah, complain, but yeah, people stop using because there are some other technology is uh, convenient for them. You've seen the example of uh, some technology going up and down and replace despite being uh, having objection at the beginning. So think about the conclusions uh, from this. My takeaway is that you, if you want to know, and it's, the, it's, hard, it's always hard to predict, uh, if you want to know which technology will succeed, uh, don't ask the general audience. Because you've seen in this example that when we ask the general audience what they're thinking, they said, no, we will never use it, and a few years later, Everyone was using that. Uh, always ask the people that are using the technology, are you going to use it? Or are you going to revert back or revert to something else uh, when you will have the first chance? This will not give you the perfect answer. It still may be a wrong answer. Uh, but it definitely gives you a better idea. For example, right now, if you think about let's say electric cars, where they will be successful. Don't ask the general audience. Well, people will say, I will stay with the combustion engine forever. Ask the people who have the electric cars. Uh, and again, I, I forgot to mention, I have it as an example with, with a smartphone versus a dumb phone. We had an uh, uh, answer there. I will never use the smartphone because I have to charge it every day. I've seen very big similarity with, uh, with the electric cars where people are saying, I'm not going to use electric cars because I have to charge it frequently. This is the same question, the same answer uh, come already invalid. So 
Uh, just make your conclusion. I will not find whether it will be successful uh, technology or not. Uh, and because may not be. Uh, but yeah, ask people uh, who are using the technology. We mentioned, and this will end up the physical, uh, physical uh, inventions. Um, now if you think software projects, because we are in the software conference, uh, it's not the same because if you develop the soft, if you develop physical uh, thing, you have to have some sales uh, so you can have factory for that. For a software project, it's pretty fine if you develop it for yourself, for for your colleague, and the project can still live and even be somehow successful. Uh, so I thought how I seen. Uh, the project I work on, I work on a project which goes up and which uh, eventually died. So what was my uh, observation? And I draw this chart. Uh, so at the beginning, you start, you start the project. Uh, develop because you need it, you uh, find it useful, and you start developing. Then. Uh, your colleagues start using this uh, project because you tell them. But then it's an interesting phase, and some of the projects never leave this phase, uh, where you find it successful and say, this will be important for other people as well. And you start mentioning on social networks, on conferences. Long time, nothing happened. Then some miracle after uh, you mention it for uh, 100 times, Somebody just pick it up and share in his circles, and it suddenly goes up. Uh, people notice it, find it useful, and even contribute with the uh, pull request and start using it. And you are full of just having it review. Uh, you may get other colleagues and hire people, create company for that, or I don't know what. At the top, you are the, you say, I'm the best. Everyone is using this. This is industry standard. Uh, and this is your best part, uh, uh, which will slowly uh, change. Because for every project I was uh, part of, uh, there, it, it went to this phase where people were asking about features which project already had. It means that the project is already too complex for people to comprehend. Uh, even for you, because suddenly you didn't wrote all those code, and like we just discussed it this morning uh, for OpenSSL, uh, LVM, there's no chance you have, uh, you know all the code. Uh, so it get complicated, and suddenly people will start complaining and saying, okay, this project is too complicated for me. Uh, it's too complicated to learn. Instead of using your project, uh, I will write something else, something simpler which fit my needs. Example of such tools which is probably right now here is Auto Tools. Uh, yeah, very complicated pro, pro, uh, project, and people are starting making uh, CMake and other tools uh, which are simpler and fit their need. Uh, and eventually, at some time. You even stop using this project, uh, and you maintain it just because somebody else is still using that uh, until you uh, say, OK, enough, and, and kill this project. Uh, the curve can be different of different size. Sometimes you don't even go to the high point, highest point. Uh, sometimes it is long. For example, for C language, it's pretty long. Uh, um, Kernel just recently, a few years ago, started using C11 standard. Uh, uh, previously, there was used C89, I think, or something like that. Uh, and uh, during that time, the whole parallel language went up and down. C, uh, Java went up and almost down. Uh, Python get Python 2 started and being replaced by Python 2. So, so whole things happened in the IT industry during the time while C was crawling on, his, on her curve. Uh, sometimes it's pretty 
uh, pretty steep, going up and down. Uh, I think the best chance, if you want to get, is stop in this pause. So, so don't accept the pull request. Uh, <laughs> don't make it complicated. Again, example, grab. So there's nothing to Im improve, it works. I just checked uh, this morning what are the commits in the grab uh, git repository. It's usually typo in documentation and bumping copyright rights. Uh, and it works, everyone is using grab because it just works. So, so it will be in this phase for ages, I think, because it doesn't have too much, it doesn't climb too high. Uh, so it doesn't have a space to fall down. Uh, but there is uh, one another reason why your project will eventually go down. And that's this graph. Uh, this, uh, this is your capacity. Day has 24 hours. You have to sleep. You want to spend some time with family, with your uh, partner, with, with kids, uh, go to pub with friends, uh, and you have only limited time for the work. And when you get out of, of the school, uh, when you start the new work, uh, you are full of new things, new ideas, what to do, what you can change, and why the heck no one does that? I'm going to start new projects. So, so you're on the beginning of the curve. Uh, and you start implementing features for that project. Uh, so you'll have less time for the new ideas uh, as it consumes your time. And as time goes, uh, you have to maintain the project. And, it will co and maintenance consume a lot of time. Uh, those who has gray hair, as, as me, probably give me it true. Uh, so, so you have less time for implementing new features and even less uh, time for new things, idea. But the industry uh, is going further, and somebody else will come with a project which is uh, inevitably better than, than yours. So this is another reason why your project will eventually die. And this is my conclusion, uh, takeaway from for software projects. Uh, your project will die. Just live with that uh, one day. If you want, want to prolong the life, Make it simple or stupid, uh, and don't reject complex features. You can start another project or help people start another project which is using your project. That's fine. That makes the life longer. But don't make the project complicated, because it will go up faster and it will die faster. And I think this is my last takeaway from, uh, for you. So. Now you have the opportunities to ask questions if you have any. Okay, Tomáš, I had a question. Yeah, I completely disagree with that. Uh, I think that I, I, I think that I don't need to do it. You said you disagree? <laughs> bang, bang! <laughs> Another question. I disagree as well, but <laughs> <laughs> Not completely, okay, okay, I will accept this question. But, but yeah, yeah, for, like definitely for one man projects or, or small group of people projects, it, it, it's like that. Yeah, you, are, you are right. Like, it, there are some real like, good takeaways here. On the other hand, on the other hand, of course there are like bigger things that can evolve and then the, the, the takeaways would be a little bit different. For example, delete things from your features that are no longer used. Uh, keep the complexity without making no by rejecting hierarchies, but by by doing other things, yeah? by by removing things that that are not useful that much anymore. And um, of course, uh, if if the project won't like evolve in the sense of the people who maintain it are different than. The people who were maintaining it uh, 25 years ago, yeah, uh, it will die eventually because the people will die. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so, so, sorry for not recording the first part. So the suggestion was, uh, uh, yeah, and I prolong the life by deleting the code, or you can even de delete the project yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, another question, yeah. <laughs> so the question was, uh, I'm third of my project. Uh, are you saying that I should merge all, uh, all merge requests? Yes, it will die very fast. <laughs> another question. Kabi. So the question is whether we can reinvent the things because complex things are getting complex eventually. Uh, yeah, uh, people. Uh, do that, they do the silly things again and again. Uh, so yeah, we're likely um, doing things which has been already invented, but just now with AI, yeah. Uh, so you have is the free version called Community Project? What is community in this? That's great. Question: uh, What is community? I, I I don't know. I don't know. Like the uh, probably the community. Community is these people. So so they help you to climb up. Uh, so you fall from higher place. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm. Uh, making a little bit fun from that, and I have to say that these takeaways and this experience is completely mine. So uh, your experience may be different, uh, and I'm really happy if you will share some of your different experience. On Uh, so the question is, uh, in uh, production, the features are usually most uh, prioritized over the uh, bugs, issues. What's my takeaway on that? Uh, uh, I don't know. Like, again, like, you implement the more features, you climb up. Uh, so just take any uh, company develop code. Uh, how many of them still alive? Something which started several years, 20 years ago. I think we will find very few of them. So, yeah, okay, there are some exceptions. Kernel, OpenStack, what, yeah, replaced by Kubernetes, OpenShift. I don't know. So, so, always, if you fool a pile of money into this chart, you can change it somehow. Uh, so, so my experience is for like small projects, uh, and if you don't put a lot of money and waste waste money there, and there are always some exception. Always. Another question. Um, the other thing is that like projects die. Well, maybe some of them die because of this, but other die because they are not useful anymore because the environment changed basically. Yeah? The, the horses uh, on the streets in New York, yeah, the environment changed. Yeah? Like the needs have changed. Have changed yeah? So it's like, okay, this is like nice. Yeah, and, and, uh, and if, it is, if it is complex, yeah, it's it's hard, is, uh, the, uh, for the audience, uh, the, the uh, question was that. Uh, some of the project will die because uh, they are not useful anymore. Yeah, and uh, if it is complex thing and some part of, uh, of it is not useful anymore, you will stop using it completely. And already write new tool which is suitable for the, the new surroundings. So again, if you make it simpler, there is a higher chance that it will survive because it will still, the part will be relevant. I 
now and then some some PM comes to you and says, okay, the business wants to, to sell this as a new thing, and it's a great invention. So it's just like the smartphones. Everybody was happy with dumb phones. I know well. I may not look it, but I know a lot of old people who would prefer to have a phone to have dumb phone, but simply don't have it. So it's because the mm -hmm. business needs. Like yeah, so the question was uh, sometimes business need uh, to sell new things and you have no choice. You hardly have a choice to uh, buy down phones nowadays. Um, yeah, that's likely true, but I believe if you will simply reject buying smartphones, there are some down phones. If, you, if there will be selling, higher selling of the down phones, they will be selling more down phones. Yes. That yes. Built, yeah? So, so I said, market money, and that's my basically marketing can change this curve a little bit, and that's the reason why, uh, for example, Coca Cola is changing their logo and uh, bottles every few years. Yeah. So, so they, you think it's a new thing? So basically, it's new project again uh, and start again. I will uh, say a uh, conventional method, like get rid of the uh, dying project as soon as possible, then uh, no state of affairs argument that it's a brand new, uh, non maintained or not well maintained strategic project for other people. That's a good idea to help them, you know, to so build these projects as soon as possible. The question is whether we should take it uh, to, to Federa and uh, remove and die faster uh, the project in Fedora which are not maintained anymore. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not so smart. But uh, like it's probably a waste of energy because uh, if it is not maintained anymore, you are probably somewhere in this, in this phase. Uh, and it's like still a quarter of the life of the project, maybe. I don't know. So I don't have an answer for that. I'm, I'm just... I just told you what I observed during my life uh, uh, and my conclusion, and I really hesitate to say it uh, and make the same conclusion you made. Another question? Yes. Uh, my kids? <laughs> Uh, I'm very attached to my kids, like the physical one. Uh, uh, the software projects, oh, well, I'm, I'm used to be attached to them. Uh, that was my first moments where I was here, and I, think, and I thought I'm a king and my projects are the best. But after experience, a few uh, downhill sections, uh, I realized, yeah, it doesn't matter too much. Like, what matters are the people. So I will happily delete my GitHub repository <laughs> right now. Uh, if you say I will be happy till uh, and with my family, I will be healthy till uh, till the end of their life. I will, I will swap it for that immediately. Another question? Seems not. Okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs>